Howdy again, it's Mr. Pete. Welcome back to Studio B. You know, I've made three videos so far on the Viva grinders. Thank you for watching them, and this is a great product. And yes, this was given to me. All three of them were given to me. But in the three previous videos, I showed you various operations and how to use the machine. But I got a little bit ahead of myself in the last video, which would have been 976. This is 977. And in this one, I'm simply going to show you how I went about mounting a little dust collection system that a man made for me. So this was sent to me by Richard Hand just recently. And it's a 3D print. And if you're interested in one of these, he makes the STL files available free. So check that out. And I'll show you his channel here in just a second. But this dust control device will fit underneath and behind the uh, the grind wheel here and it will be of course hooked up to a vacuum cleaner and will suck out all the swarf. Now there isn't a lot of, uh, there's a lot of grinding dust but it's all steel from the bits. There is no abrasives from the wheel because these are uh, this type of wheel that is is not composed of abrasives so there's not a whole lot of swart, but it does get, make a mess and it gets all over the shop. The only downside to this is the noise of a vacuum cleaner. So this is really incredibly uh, intricate and amazing how he went about doing this. And Stefan over there, I believe he's in Germany, also made a similar one for his. Not exactly this design, but similar. So you can check out his channel too. This is Stefan Ghostwinner's video on his drill sharpener, a different model, it's a Motom, and I'll be talking more about that in another video, but according to him, that company made available a little adapter for removing the swarf, but he didn't buy one because that machine was so expensive, and he did 3D print one, so if you want to check out his video on drill sharpeners, you might find it extremely interesting. He's an incredibly intelligent man. Alright, let's take a look at how this is to be mounted. So that's what I'm going to do in this video, is simply mount it. But it's not going to be that simple. I have to make an adapter. So let's see how I'm going to do that. A functional print of Friday. Look at the FPF there. And it is this video, and let me zoom in on that, where he talks about me and how he went about making this device. And this is the video that he made, and he makes one video every week, so check out his channel and watch this video entitled 3D Printed Shop Vac Adapter for Drill Bit Sharpener. So if I open the guard here on the Beaver Grinder, you're going to see here that there is swarf that has infested the entire machine, pretty much confined to this area, but you'll see some out here as well. So looking at the 3D print, that Richard made. You can see that there's a hole right here and I have to remove one of the feet off of the bottom here but this hole here in the original grinder I think was provided for dust removal. So how is this thing going to work? Well let me close that up and it will basically fit in there just like this. I'm not going to mount it yet until I make an adapter. Now, obviously Richard's vacuum hose is larger than this because it would fit this. That's what he made it to fit. His, not mine. He didn't know what I had, but this is what my vacuum looks like. And of course it's way too small to fit in this large hole. So I'm going to take this piece of Delrin that Jim Desmond gave me some time ago, and it's large enough in diameter where I'm going to turn it down to fit in here and I'm not sure if I want to press fit or how I'm going to fit that or possibly just glue it and it'll make it easier on me. And then, and that'll only be about three quarters long. I'll cut this off and it'll also need a hole for the vacuum uh, cleaner hose to fit in. And that's about one and three quarter diameter, this is. And this hole here is about 2.285. So actually this video is about is a lathe project on how to make that and then how to install it. So let's step over to the lathe and 
make this and it's, it's going to be a pretty simple job and I will speed it up to save you the agony of watching a slow slow video. The work is mounted in the three jaw chuck and this Delrin should just machine beautifully. The chips ought to come off almost like a ribbon. You know what? I almost goofed that up. So I just took a couple passes to clean it up and then I measured it and it's already almost undersized just by sheer luck. Thank you Lord. But notice that this will fit on there right now. That's a darn good fit. Probably wouldn't even have to glue it. So I'm done there. And I went one inch back. And now I have to, I believe I'll cut it off now and then just put the small piece in the chuck and use an annular cutter and then a boring bar to take it out to size. So I can't believe how quickly that happened. And I almost ruined it. Okay, the OD is finished. I'm going to cut it off. I installed the cutoff tool and I have way too much blade sticking out, but for a large diameter that's what I need. But to me it's scary, so let's just lop this off real quickly. I could use a saw, but I'm not going to. Not quite enough. Not quite enough blade sticking out. I'll, I'll that'll twist off, I think. Yeah. Okay. There it is. Just got a hole to put in it now. Okay, I've installed an inch and a half annular cutter. That's also a Viva product. Remember when they gave those to me? So that's inch and a half, and I'll just go all the way through, and then I got to finish off with the boring bar. How awesome is that? I wish I would have discovered these annular cutters 40 years ago. Well, here's the slug that came out, but naturally this isn't going to fit yet. I have to bore it out. But now on second thought here, in retrospect, like being a Monday morning quarterback, I used an inch and a quarter, but I have, no, an inch and a half. I do have a one and three quarter, and that's probably what I should have used, and I, maybe I wouldn't even have needed to bore it. But... Anyway, I'm committed, so I'll bore this out to, uh, what did I say here, I got a dimension, about one and three quarters, a little bit less maybe. Let's bench test it. That's a pretty good fit. If it does loosen up, I'll use a little glue in there of some kind. And then, of course, that's going to fit just perfectly, isn't it? All right, now that that is done, let's go ahead and mount it on the grinder itself, and that won't take long. Okay, the rubber bumper here right next to the hole had to be removed because in fact the thickness of this is the same thickness as as this. Can you see that? So I will set that aside and Richard did include a couple screws here because he knew I would need longer ones so look at that he's got everything packaged so nicely so this screw also needs to be removed. These are all metric you know I'll set that aside, but before I put this on, let's just see how this works. So this hole here will be right in line with this hole. And the air from the vacuum cleaner has a passage that goes right through there. I don't think that'll reach, but anyway, this hole does connect with the main hole.
not too tight because these are 3D prints that have some hollowness. I don't want to crush it. All right, as you can see, that's just going to work perfectly, isn't it? So I went from this, removed this, took a little bit off the OG, and in fact, this whole project could have been done probably in 10 to 15 minutes if I wasn't filming it. As it is, it still only took about 20. Not quite done. Also included in a nice bag is this plug. You know, this whole thing is very ingenious. So this is the little handle which he glued in. This is a 3D print also and he has installed a couple of neodymium magnets there and the purpose of this is to plug this hole when you're uh, web thinning right here so you don't have the air leak so it will draw all of the air not leaking through here but through here and you know there's louvers here or I should say vent holes and that's where the air will go in and be sucked out here. One more thing here, and when you're not using this, so you don't lose it, it can go up here, and that is its storage spot. How cool is that? Thank you very much, Richard. I'm still not quite done, so let me take the hose off so I can demonstrate this, and when we spin this around here, the purpose of this large hole is simply a storage place for the collet chuck. And what are these two holes for? Well, included in the kit from Beaver are two different metric Allen keys and they fit in there and he even went to the extra effort to make sure that they, the holes are different, different depths so that these stick up about the right amount. So remember, be sure and check out Friday Print Functional. No, what is that? Functional Print Friday. <laughs> I had it backwards. I usually put the date on things too. So there it is. By the way, he's also designed this. You know, he made several prototypes. You almost always need to make prototypes when you're making a new product. But it's, you can still open to clean it out or change the wheel or without taking this uh, print off. So really neat isn't it? Now I'm not going to use it at this moment. I'm not going to demonstrate it because that was demonstrated in the previous video which was 976. But that's how I went about making, mounting it and making the adapter. Apparently they make many different sizes of vacuum cleaner hoses. This is really a good hose because it's extra long, extra flexible, and this is slightly tapered also, or did I say that already? So it will stay in there. Slightly tapered. Maybe a two degree taper. I found out that years ago, if you just put things like this in a drawer, you will forget what they are. So I like to label things and set them aside and Keep them with the grinder. So here's the finished product. Pretty awesome. Almost looks like it was designed by the company that made the machine. You know, I really like, I've mentioned this before, I like the fact that you can unplug this like a computer so the cord was not in the way during this entire project. It makes things a lot easier. Now I said I wasn't going to demonstrate this, but actually I will demonstrate the suction. I'm not going to grind any bits in this video, is what I meant. Now when I turn the vacuum cleaner on, there will be a deafening roar. So I cannot talk, and you're probably happy about that. But not only is there a loud noise from the vacuum cleaner itself, but you can hear the air being pulled through here, and that's pretty loud too. Now I took the liberty of lighting a piece of punk for a smoke source, so on goes the vacuum cleaner.
but boy is it loud. Order yourself one of these. I'll put the uh, link in the description if you're interested. There's a discount code as well. And make sure you watch all of the videos in this series. By the time I'm done and talking about drill bit geometry and even grinding some small drills, which I haven't done yet, there'll be at least six videos in the series. So check them all out. This is Mr. Pete saying so long for now. And thank you again to Richard for making this for me and contacting me without even asking. Now I no longer have a 3D printer. I said that, I believe. And that's why he did this for me. And he used, I think, uh, one of the CAD programs to design this. Very clever. Watch it in action in uh, number 976. I think earlier in the video I talked about the fact that I will be making a video on drill bit geometry and guess what the male beast just brought and he was here just five minutes ago and in a package marked Fragili is one of my original drill bits from 40 years ago so watch for the video of that and thanks for sending this is just on loan and it hasn't even been opened yet I hope it he said he shipped it in a can or something like that and marked it for Jilly so it should be in good condition although sometimes this word invites the post office to drop kick the packages you may remember this Vivor set of annular cutters and that's what I was using